Welcome to the Featured Anime Podcast. I'm your host, Jack. And today, unfortunately, Rick could not join us. Uh, he had some things pop up. So I will do my very best to keep things rolling as best as possible. Now, uh, before we dive into this week's choice, which is The Stranger by the Shore, uh, if you feel like you want to support us and listen to some pre and post show content that we usually put out with every episode, uh, barring the last couple of uh, episodes that we've done, um, feel free to join us on our Patreon, patreon.com slash featured anime podcast, a dollar a month will gain you access to bonus content and more. Also, if you feel like you want to support us through other means other than just through Patreon and you want to, you know, donate to us or anything else like that, you could certainly do that. We do have all kinds of links and everything like that available for you in our show notes. Uh, as well as everything and all the information that you could possibly need is available on our website, featured anime podcast.com. And if you want to help buy or support us through a swanky swag throne merch, you can go to shop dot featured anime podcast.com and buy yourself some swanky swag. I promise you it is well worth it. Also, if you want to support us through another way and also fill up your belly with some nice, delicious treats, you can check out Tokyo treat. This month, they do have going on the Sakura Snacktastic treat. And trust me, the snacks that they always have going on is very, very delicious and special for our listeners. If you use our affiliate link in the show notes, along with coupon code featured anime, you get $5 off that very first box. And trust me, the treats are worth it. They are oh so delicious. I am never honestly disappointed in them. And I would honestly gorge myself on them if they send it to me every single day trust me the treats are always just that good and now on to the meat and rotatoes stranger by the shore uh came out in september 2020 so it is a really fairly new release for us produces for our uh, half hp studio and blue links just for a couple of them studio for it is studio hibari It's based off of a manga and it is a boy love film and it runs just shy of an hour. Now the, the movie, honestly, it it starts off. You have Shun, which is our main character. He's trying to grasp, grasp with being uh, openly gay in a manner of speaking while he's trying to also at the exact same time, be a novelist in uh, Okinawa. Uh, basically, uh, when he decided to come out and everything like that, his parents chose to basically abandon him, which is really messed up to do and didn't want really anything to kind of do with him. So they ended up having, you know, to break apart and not really look at each other so much anymore. Or 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 he had to to do away with the ties, so so to speak. So that way he can move on with life. Now he's seeing a a kid Mio actually by the shore and he sees him over there every single day. And the kid's very depressed, very sad. And he's going over there, tries to talk to him nonchalantly and everything like that at the exact same time. And Mio like is struggling with his own depression and his own uh, internal struggles with his identity, who he is and, and how he's going to go about life and the loss of his mother. And this, this story, while it it seems like it'd be really great and really deep in the depth of it, it's, it's really kind of very shallow, very surface area. I feel like the animation, the artwork are very beautiful. It's very well done. I just feel like a lot of the, the storytelling and the story writing were just kind of like half shot. It's like, okay, Shun is having this problem and everything like that. Cool. You know what? Let's, let's see some, some actual growth for Shun, right? But instead what we end up getting is Shun kind of like, oh, I am, I am gay or I'm openly this way. And then at the exact same time, he's kind of not like embracing himself, which I understand. Like no matter who you are, you're always going to have those issues. You're going to have those problems. And, and And there's going to be a large group of people, regardless of how you fall, that are always going to have this issue and problem. And it, it lightly touches on some of the childhood trauma or touches on 
on the ridicule he got as a child. However, I mean, it, 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 it didn't really touch it hard enough. Right. It's like, Oh, they said like a couple of small comments when they didn't think he was listening. And that was Shun's big trauma or his traumatic point, right. For, for school. And it's like, okay. I mean, like if that's all you really had to deal with, that's nothing. Uh, in all honesty, I mean, I got picked on and, and called all kinds of names and things like that growing up. And if someone just said half as nice of things or, or behind my back or anything like that, it honestly, even at, at the age wouldn't have bothered me so much. Now, now I, I wish that they kind of like delved into it, like showed some more struggles rather than it being like a couple of students saying something behind his back when he, when he wasn't there, show the actual tension between him and his family, right? Show the tension on why he doesn't go back to his family, why he doesn't go and visit his family at all or anything like that. Show, show me why, or tell me why there's the actual deals or issues that are going on there rather than just leaving it up to, to like a single sentence or a single word that is said. I feel like it does it injustice in all honesty. And I mean, it's not that, that I'm, I'm diminishing or, or belittling his particular point or, or the struggles that he went through. It's just, I wish the animation and the script writers honestly helped bring that more to life, right? Like actually give us the details, tell us like the big falling out when he decided to come out with his parents or what, how they found out or, or what have you, right? Like have us like kind of sympathize with Shun and his struggles more than what we did. Because honestly, I just, I don't see him going through the hardship with the emotions that he's honestly kind of putting out there, especially when it comes to Mio Mio, who, who was there when he was younger left. And then they did a three year time skip comes back and Mio's perfectly comfortable and open with who he is and how he is and, and just willing to accept not only himself as who he is, which is rightfully so and right on for Mio, but, but willing to accept Shun and, and go forward and, and push forward with him. And now the, the issue that I kind of have is like, Mio's very, very pushy. He's like, like, bro, you haven't seen me in three years. He's like, come on, baby, let's, let's do this. Let's, let's get down and dirty. And he is no, in no way wanting to do that. Shun is not wanting to do that at all. He's dabbling on it. He pulls away. He's hiding away from it, despite the fact that he's saying all this stuff and or acting in a very particular way. And Mio is openly embracing it. He's accepting Shun for who he is, despite whatever struggles or hardships or anything like that, that Mio has gone through. And and we don't know what Mio has gone through for the three years that he was gone or even before that. Right. We just know that he had lost his family, he had some hardships and things. And that he's come back and he's came back for Shun. And despite the fact that Shun wanted him there and, and, and was attracted to him, Mio came back and he's like, Hey, you know what, man, I am, I'm willing to accept this for whatever it is. And, and I, I'm willing to love you for how, however you are. And, and Shun is, is very withdrawing, very pulling, you know, he's pulling away and, and not reciprocating Mio in any way, he's not even discussing it or talking to him or anything like that. So the, it causes this, this drama or, or this, these issues that are in between the two of them. And, and I feel like that's, it's done a disservice because we're not shown Shun's real problems, his issues that he actually had to deal with or struggle with. And I feel like had we gone through that, had we understood what actually happened to Shun, um, I feel like like we would have had a better understanding of, of the dynamic in between the two. Just the fact that, that the three year time gap too also vastly changes how they are. Whereas Mio was very withdrawn and, and kind of shy before. And he is now basically very open and very, very talkative. And he's like, Hey, what's up? I'm willing to come help you out and, and everything like that. Shun is not so much. And he's, very lackadaisical. He's very, very withdrawn and, and it, it, it's kind of just like hard to see or, or, or very, very sad to see kind of how, like how it plays out. Now there's several points throughout the anime where you see like people kind of like pushing him forward. It's like, Hey, you know, you can totally do this. It's all right. Go forward. You know, 
embrace the life that you, that you could have with Mio. And instead he constantly pulls away and pulls away and, and, and hides or, or changes how he acts or anything like that. And that's, that's one of the things that I just really didn't like about this. Uh, granted towards the end, he does have a change of heart. He does finally come out of a shell and, and embrace Mio and they have their rendezvous, so to speak. Um, more on that in a minute, but it, it's, it's, I, I feel like it was a very drastic change, right? In in that you don't have a massive like motion for a character growth. You don't, you don't, you don't have the, the uh, motion to be able to, to like grow in the, the way that he should have been emotionally grown. And instead, we're, we're kind of like shoehorned into this moment where he's like, all right, f- screw it. Throw caution to the wind. And this is exactly what I'm going to do. And, and I feel like he's kind of like pressured at the exact same time and then not. And then, you know, the fact that he's constantly basically lived even at that point, an entirely sheltered life and, and refused intimacy with anyone. Uh, from what I remember, uh, versus uh, Mio, who who was younger than him, is like, hey man, you know, I'm I'm willing to go out there. I'm going out there, experimenting, trying to find out who I am, and and that's totally cool. And but at the exact same time, I feel like Mio's personality was a little too like, hey, you should totally accept who you are, and then at the exact same time, not get upset over the fact that he was like still struggling all these years later for whatever reason, despite what he had said, what he had done. And I I mean, like I can understand Mio's frustration, but at the exact same time, it's everyone has their story. Everyone has their struggles or their, their points in which they have to try and figure it out for themselves. And, and I feel like he should have been, I don't know, they should have discussed a little bit more or been, been a little bit more in their, discussions is like, Hey, this is what I'm trying to do in my relationship or what I'm looking for. Or, or like, Hey, you know, I'm not comfortable with the, and this is why instead of just like changing the subject saying, Hey, you know, what's a uh, two plus two. Oh, you know, some nice weather we're having is basically what Shun would do whenever Mio would ask a question or so, or Mio would just like go in straight for the, for the jugular and, and Shun's like, Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. Cool, you just big boy. Like this is not the time or place, and and here you are just trying to jump me right now. And I get it, I get it. You know they're they're struggling, but I don't know. I I, I just feel like I just feel like it was poorly done. I feel like the the story could have been better. I feel like they they shortchanged the growth, the character growth, especially for the both of them. Like it should have been more fleshed out. It should have been written better. And it was honestly kind of feels like it was done more so for a fan service esque type thing. Uh, especially when it came to like the last like five minutes, you had a five minute scene where they're intimate with each other in so many words. And, and it's like, like, okay, I, I don't need like even in any other anime, I don't need a random scene just kind of thrusted in where they're exploring each other sexually. I mean, like that is, that is not what I was thinking it was going to end up happening, but that's what ended up happening. And I, I feel like it was such a drastic change for the, Oh, I'm not ready. Oh, I don't want to do this. Oh, I'm not ready for this to literally. I just took a shower. Hey, you know what? Let's do this. It's like, but you spent the last 45 minutes telling me no, and you're not ready. And now you're just like, eh, you know what? I'm going to have the shower, have this letter or whatever. And I'm done. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and move on with my life. I'm going to do this now. And it's like, okay, well, first of all, you're just at that point, just thrusting needless fan service out for, for the masses, which, you know, Hey, if that's what you want to do more than welcome to. Right. Hey, I know that there's going to be a lot of people out there that would be more than happy and willing to, to, to just drink that up. That being said, I just, I just feel like, I just feel like everything just wasn't right. Like the development was fast. The 
character growth was very minimal and it jumps from zero to a hundred and almost immediately, especially towards the end. And then that's it. I mean, like you're kind of like left out. Like what the hell did I just, what did I just watch? Like, where's the, where's the actual growth? Where's the, the, the development. I mean, like you, you, you did like, what was the purpose of the time skip? Why did they do the time? skip? why didn't they just start off with him? Like right there and then just flash back. Or, or say, hey, you know, I remember this or whatever and talk about it or explore them a little bit more. I mean, like this would have been so good. I mean, like so good, especially if they turned it into like a series or even an hour and a half movie. Right. Add an extra 30 minutes to provide more context and growth. Right. Or rewrite it so that way there is better growth and development rather than fast track it and just like zero to 100 it and and do the characters just disjustice you know do i mean like do them justice the first time around don't shortchange it don't do them dirty like that and that's what they did i do i do now all the negativity and everything like that aside i do like that it did give a resolution right i i do like that he shun finally did come to terms with himself i'm glad that mio and shun did really share an intimate moment with each other right it it was nice i i didn't I feel like the intimate moment was drawn out and there was a lot of needless dialogue. I feel like it could have been like a pillow scene or something like that rather with than without all the other fluff that was in there. But, and I get why they did it. I I understand. I'm not dumb, but I just feel like it could have been done better. Uh, And it is nice to see that they actually did in fact provide that that uh growth for him right finally give that resolution where he is finally comfortable with who he is and he's willing to move forward with mio and grow in that sense where he's finally able to like hey you know what this is who i am this is how i'm gonna be and you know i'm just i just gotta embrace who i am i'm glad to see that that happened i'm glad to see that that came to fruition because it would have been even more aggravating, very upsetting had that not come to pass. So I'm glad that they did provide that resolution. I'm not happy with how it got there. I'm not happy with the way it, we got it, but I am happy that we did get it. Uh, now as for anything else, I mean, like, honestly, the music in this was, was good. I mean, like when it was there, when it wasn't there, it's not like you really missed it, but it wasn't out of place. It was, done just right, which can be very hard to do. And then you also have the artwork. Now the artwork for the background, the scenery and, and everything like that was honestly, it was great. The, the deep attention to detail and everything like that was just really wonderful. I enjoyed seeing all that artwork there, like how it was beautifully done and, and everything like that. Then at the exact same time, I feel like they kind of phoned it in for the characters. I mean, like sometimes they were drawn. Okay. Other times they were, they were done a disservice. Like they focused more on the background and the scenery and everything like that more so than they did the characters. I mean, I feel like they should have done a little bit more for the characters too. Right. And just give them a little bit more justice, give them a little bit more cleaner details. I mean, like I get it. That's probably the art style that the, the, the director was going for. I, I understand, but I just, I just feel like they put invested more in the background and scenery and the artwork for it than they did the actual characters. Now the voice acting was actually very well done. I enjoyed the voice acting. They, they were really well, it was really well done. So I have honestly no complaints for it. And the fact that, that, you know, the actors, voice actors were able to do it so beautifully were, was really, really nice. Like how they conveyed the emotions for the characters was beautifully done. But again, I just kind of have to fall back to the script, right? The, the writing forum was not great. And I just feel like they were done dirty. So honestly, with, with that being said, I, I don't really have too much more that I can say. I don't have too much too much else I can say. I, it, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, you'll either love it or you won't. Um, but I can appreciate it for what it is. I mean, like the story was lackluster at most. I mean, I honestly wouldn't, if, if there's someone that's, that's a boy love fan, honestly, I would not love, I would not recommend this. 
to them, at least for a first go around simple, because this, this does the median. So, so much injustice for it with, the, with horrible writing and poor character development. It just, it is not done right. The artwork is great. The, the backgrounds, the scenery is great, but that's about it. Uh, so for me on a scale of up to 10, I would honestly, I would give this a five, a, a flat five. And it's because of the poor character development, the short time and the, the rapid growth and zero to a hundred and all the other negativity, negative things that I said about this. That's why, right? Just a flat five. And I'm, the reason why I'm not going lower than a five is because one, it did give a, a resolution. It, 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 you did get the resolution between Mio and Shun, which I am happy for. I'm, I'm glad that they did not, that would have pissed me off. It had they just like, Oh, well, Mio's going off or Shun's going off to wherever, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, you just had me invested last hour of my time watching Mio and Shun play this cat mouse game and you're not actually doing anything with it. And then you decide to end it. That would have pissed me off to no end. So I am honestly, I am really happy that they gave him a beautiful resolution that you had Shun and Mio come together at the very end, that they stopped doing this cat and mouse thing and that they're basically embracing each other and loving each other and moving forward. So that is something that I'm really, really happy about. And that's why I'm not going lower than a five because you did get that resolution. You had the wonderful artwork and scenery around it. The voice actors carried this and the artwork carried this. And so that's why I'm, I'm at a five now uh, for next week's choice. Uh, we're going to, I'm, we're going to be talking about uh, words bubble up like soda pop. Uh, that's all the time that I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this week's choice with uh, yours truly. And uh, if you feel like I did it too much justice or not enough justice or just got things wrong or anything like that, feel free to let me know. I'd be happy to hear from you on this. You can reach out to us and all our contact information and everything is available in our show notes. You can also go to featured anime podcast.com and get all the information on there. You can also go to a patreon.com slash featured anime podcast. You don't even have to pay to follow us on there. You can message us on Patreon and everything like that on there too. You don't even have to, to pay, but if you want to, you can, and you'll get access to some bonus content and trust me, the content is worth it. Also, if you want to help support us through other means, you can go to shop.futuredanimepodcast.com and get yourself some swanky swag. And trust me, the swag is very nice. And if you want to buy yourself some treats and get some delicious treats, check out Tokyo Treat. We do have an affiliate link for you in the show notes. And if you use that affiliate link along with coupon code featured anime, you will get $5 off that first box and it helps support us, helps us grow. And you at the exact same time, get some wonderful tasty treats to fill your belly. And trust me, those treats are worth it. And until next time, I'm Jack and we'll catch you later.